cheekbones. You think they're genetic? Think again. They change. And you can change them all by yourself. Before we start, I'd like to thank all of our patrons for signing up and showing their support. Your support on Patreon and direct donations are essential to building a better channel, to help us, to help you. Your cheekbones are yours for the taking. Take Kyle Jenner, great cheekbones. Always been this good? No. Between 2009 and 2018, about nine years, there's been change. Has she had work? Lips, most likely. Possibly bust and bum. But cheekbones? I don't think so. Change like this happens. Not often, but not infrequently. In my opinion, she's achieved an upswing in facial form. As the face height decreases, the mid face is squeezed out, essentially the cheekbones. Under 25, I've seen a lot of examples, mainly mirrors, but only in the very dedicated, in people who have made lifestyle or physical changes. And I think she's done both. She admits to having her lips affected, which clearly can affect lip sale, if done right. And she has entered the public eye, where resting with your mouth open and poor body posture is possibly detrimental to your brand. And to a great extent, her face is her brand. And she never knows when someone's going to take one of those secret photographs, which is reprogramming her posture. And over time, this has an effect. So how do you do this? First, what are the cheekbones? The important point is this area, the junction of the maxilla and the zygoma. These bones form the foundation of the cheekbone. Just below this area is the cheek itself, the bulk of which is the buccinator muscle, which is designed to assist an infantile suckle. But most people never fully move over to an adult swallow and the buccinators never shrink. Babies and cherubs have big buccinators. Adults should have hollow cheeks through a change in usage. If your buccinator is too large, it detracts from high cheekbones since all things are relative and it's the contrast which gives definition. It worries me that too many people put those chubby cheeks down to carrying a few extra pounds. But adipose tissue is not the major element. I've helped too many people to change and there's no shortage of large people with hollow cheeks. So don't fool yourself. They are cute. It's a sign of youthfulness. But where do you think old people's jowls come from. Enlarged cheeks, losing tone and heading south. Is it possible to change? Well, clearly yes. Easy, no. But this channel is for people with commitment. When muscles and bones fight, the muscles always win and your tongue is the most important muscle in this respect. The science is unclear as to the exact nature, but it does seem that posture is more important than function, although the two are closely linked. It seems that people with good anterior cheekbones have good tongue posture. Their tongue rests on the roof of their mouth for significant periods of time. And remember that time is more important than force. Also, if the tongue is between the teeth, low in the mouth during swallowing and function, 
then the buccinators, the cheek muscles, will be engaged to reciprocate this force, which will thus build up the size of the cheeks and reduce the definition of the cheekbones. Ideally, the tongue should live on the roof of the mouth in a suction hold for both posture and function. This is where it rests. This should be, for most of the time, its postural position. It is time dependent, and the percentage of time that the tongue is here compared to the amount of time that it is not is the most important factor. It is possible to influence the general muscle tone of the tongue with resistance training, which can influence its rest position. A good example of this is in bodybuilders that have the tendency to focus their resilience training upon their shoulders abductus and their pecs, which result in an altered position of their shoulders so the arms rise up. In effect, they have gained change in arm posture from a change in function. I think that tongue chewing and tongue lifts are the best way to achieve this. But remember, I don't have all the answers. In a suction hold, the feeling surface of the tongue should touch the roof of the mouth, the palate only. It should not touch the teeth. The oral cavity is completely filled with the rest of the tongue and the soft tissue from below the tongue, but there are far less nerves in this area. So in reality, the undersurface of the tongue, floor of the mouth, does touch the inside of both the upper and lower teeth, just the bits you don't feel. Problems. Many people lack tongue space. Some will find the back of their tongue extends into their airway when they attempt to perfect tongue placement. And as such, some will find it impossible to reprogram this position as default. Change is difficult, especially when the physical structure prevents any change, which is something I will be covering more specifically. We are creatures of comfort and habit often constrained by our own neural pathways. Almost anyone can exhibit good posture, but almost no one does all of the time, or for significant periods to elicit change. This is the problem. When I was about 25, I asked a friend to place a small filling on the back of an upper front tooth to remind me to change. And over time, my cheeks have hollowed out, and I've probably gained a little more anterior cheekbone. And a little change in both can gain a compounded visual change, as it is the difference which counts, giving more definition to this area. Neural programming using inanimate objects can help. For instance, focus on a door handle and repeat a mantra of thought so that each time you touch a door handle, you remember where your tongue is. This can help, as can setting a timer to go off periodically. Focusing on functions or exercises can help. Functions are something that you can do, and it's relatively simple to engage in an exercise you can remember to go down the gym. But changing posture is different. While function is something that you do, posture is you. And changing posture is changing yourself, quite literally. And this is difficult, but it's what you need to achieve. Posture and function are integrally related. And, over time, a change in one is likely to elicit a change in the other. Situation-dependent exercises can help. The one 
I like is the mealtime exercise. Most people eat for at least an hour a day and do not underestimate the cumulative effect of one hour's focused exercise each and every day. This has a compounding effect. The idea is to create a virtuous cycle of change. As the more you change your posture, the more you change your structure, which then helps you gain further changes in posture, effectively by increasing tongue space. Now, this can be helped artificially with expansion, particularly skeletal expansion. You can see how your cheekbones move out in this case example from one moon. This can also help someone to start a virtuous cycle of change. A good alternative approach is to change head posture. Again, a general lack of tongue space will inhibit a change in head posture, as is the back of the tongue can affect the airway. But there is room for change here with dedication, and most of us overbreathe. We will cover this area with butego breathing. Improving head posture can help the tongue rise up onto the roof of the mouth. Also, the mealtime exercise, as well as the abs walk, are good ways of precipitating a change in head posture. From about eight years old, the maxilla becomes more and more firmly fixed within the craniofacial structure. After around 25, the relative ease of eliciting change in the maxilla greatly increases. Over 25, the dedication per unit of change seems to increase, although it is always possible to gain change. In general, expansion of the palate can be very helpful in breaking habits. The most common expansion is transverse expansion, widening the palate. I usually recommend the alpha plants, and we discussed this in a video with Jim Bronson. We also demonstrated one moon's approach, but this is significantly more invasive and likely to serve the occlusion the way the teeth meet together, which if not approached correctly, can be counterproductive. We have also seen evidence that the Faga appliance can have a direct effect on the maxilla. And I will be examining this in more detail in videos to come. Of course, general improvements in body posture will also help, especially due to its effects on head posture and neck posture. Over time, we will be exploring a range of methods to improve body posture. And there's clearly a plethora of methods and treatments aimed at gaining this. If you're new to this channel, and you found today's video interesting, then please consider subscribing. We're putting new videos out every week covering topics like jaw joint problems, crooked teeth, practical advice on how to develop your facial structure. Again, I'd like to thank our patrons, especially Michelle and Venus for their generous contributions. If you would like to have your name credited in our video, vote on upcoming topics or see our videos a few days early, please consider becoming a Patreon. Go to patreon.com orthotropics. If for any reason Patreon is not your style, but you would still like to help us make these regular videos a reality or reward us for the benefits we may have given you, there's a link in the description to donate directly below. I'd also like to remind our viewers that half of all the money we raise goes to the Craniofacial Health Foundation, a new charity dedicated for promoting awareness, education, research, and changes to health policy for all aspects of craniofacial health. Thanks for making it to the end. Show us your support through the links below. Bye.